Hi everyone, Kelvin here from London Stereo Review X is my channel where I'm reviewing every type of stereo equipment I can, trying to bring you the truth about hi-fi. What sounds good? What doesn't sound good? You can spend a lot of money to get something that doesn't sound good. Today, uh, it's kind of a trip down memory lane and it, it certainly is for me uh, with this old CD player, 1986. I'll give you the details in a minute. Um, it reminds me of the time when CDs came out and, you know, the kind of effect they had on people, how they, what they thought about them, how they thought they were much better. <sighs> they probably weren't as good as you thought, but I'll go into that detail in a minute. But uh, let me just tell you what this is. This is a Philips CD650. This is from 1986. And, you know, Philips invented the CD player, so I'm told. And the first one came out in 1981. So this is about eight or ten players along the line, you know. Uh, interesting, that first CD player 101, that's kind of a collectible thing now. But I think it's only because of it being the first one. Uh, I don't think it's because it sounds good, because I'm going to doubt that quite a lot. Anyway, this one, uh, it has the, what it's called a TDA1541 digital converter, for those of you that want to know. Um, this thing has got so many features that it's kind of, uh, kind of, you know, embarrasses a modern CD player. You can literally, with this little box here, and I'll, I'll bring the camera in in a minute, this little button thing comes out here program keyboard you could program each cd for what tracks you wanted to hear i think in what order or what ones you didn't want to hear on any given cd and this machine would remember it yeah and i mean it's kind of i don't know i like this uh, liquid crystal display and you know it's very old, so it's got its own little headphone amp here and its own volume button here. I mean, at the time, it would have been an expensive thing. Uh, now, let me just talk about what happened, you know, back in the day, because I brought my first CD player, I'm going to guess something like 1984. This is 1986. And it made such an impact everyone was kind of ditching their vinyl and they thought that CD was just the best thing since sliced bread. They also made out that CDs would last forever, that, that there was an idea that you couldn't scratch them and nonsense like that, but of course you can. Um, but what happened was the CD came out and I remember getting a, my CD player, my turntable, and because I'm a hi-fi lunatic, I was playing the same track on the album and the same track on a CD, put them on simultaneously so I could switch from uh, phono vinyl to CD, you know, during the song at exactly the same point in the song, right? To tell which sounded better. Now, here's the funny thing. What I discovered much later was that kind of switching five seconds of this five seconds of that now when i did that the cd player sounded better than my turntable it took me quite a while well a few years i would say you know before i realized that you this doesn't work as a comparison now, you would think it would work. And I certainly thought, well, oh, this is going to be clear as day. This is the fantastic test that I've been waiting for. But what happens is when you go from one to the other, all that happens is you notice the brightest things, the loudest things. You notice the new, bright, sharp brashness of the CD player. And you don't notice the things that you've lost, which in a turntable would be, you know, the great subtleties, the great decay, 
slow decay of instruments. So, uh, I mean, I'm digressing here, but I think it's really interesting that because it generalizes to listening to different equipment and that AB kind of test with just a few seconds blast of each one, you think it's going to work. You think that would be good, but it is just is not, just doesn't really work. Because uh, you, you just notice the new, the bright, you know what I mean? Okay, so I'm going to bring the camera in, let you have a good look at this, uh, and then we'll talk about the sound in detail, more detail. And let's have a little look inside. For those of you that know about these things, I can't say I particularly do. And let's look at the back because the back is interesting. Stop. We have two different outputs and a digital out, I should say. So we have this one called additional filtering out. And there is your standard out, just says out. And there's a digital, there's a remote. But this one is the one which has been through some extra filters, which I guess is this circuit board here, uh, which kind of gives it a more analogy sound. Let's bring that round. Being careful not to uh, electrocute myself. Let's have a good look at this. It's got some interesting stuff. And if I come real close, what does this say? Favorite track selector selection program. Look at these little ones here. Single play, norm play, copy, pause, auto pause. Infrared remote control, wow we compact disc digital audio. Uh, it has its own little uh, headphone amp there. And then look at this. This is for programming your discs so it's quite the humdinger i really like the blue display i've got to say i'm a bit of a sucker for that so what would i say about the sound of this ah it's brash with those two different inputs at the back the original the sort of ordinary digital and the slightly smoothed out one. The ordinary digital one is so much, it gives you so much mid range, which is kind of nice. It's kind of nice. You know, you're suddenly hearing tons of detail and that's kind of a good thing, but it really isn't that refined. What you're not getting, you see, you won't notice this at first. You see, this is funny. This is the way these these machines worked at the time. Everyone heard all this big mid-range and thought, oh, this is incredible. But what we weren't noticing was at the top end, the symbol, you know, the psh, ding, the, the slow decay of instruments, the real refinedness, the real top end air. You know, the live air right at the top. It's not there. It's just not there. It's, you know, it's not there. It's hardly there. But the mid-range is there in abundance. And you really notice it. God, do you notice it. Um, so it's big and brash in the middle. You know, that can be interesting. Bottom end is mm, okay. Typical kind of CD stuff. Now, let me just say, because I've only experienced really good bass on two CD players, 
One was a super expensive uh, acoustic research and a quite expensive Sony from the 90s. You hear those CD players and you suddenly realise that the CD players can have lucid bass. Most times I kind of don't expect great bass from a CD. I don't know what's going on. Maybe I'm just noticing the, the rest of the information, but most average CD players really don't give you great lucid bass. I mean, a lot of things don't give you great lucid bass. A lot of turntables don't give you great lucid bass, but really good ones do, and really great uh, CD players do. And when you hear that, you go, oh, I, I, you know, I was, sh it's kind of shocking. It was shocking to me that this can happen. Uh, you just kind of somehow don't expect it. I don't know what it is. You don't kind of expect it from a CD player. But anyway, so that's the sound of this CD player. Do I think you should go and get one? I've got to say no, even though they only go for like 40 pounds. It's old, you know, this is an old thing. There's a lot to go wrong with it. This door doesn't always open. It's say, what does it say there? Motor powered front loading. There's all these, you know, little names that they no longer want to say these things. Um, there's so many things to go wrong. I can't suggest that you go and buy a basically plastic CD player from 1986. Unless you're like me and you're like the nostalgia of it. And I, I genuinely get a kick out of this. But um, I've got to say, I, I wouldn't buy one myself. Uh, okay, is that it? I think that's about it, you know. So it's a trip down memory lane for me, you, and a little bit of info on like the, the, the curious thing that happened when CD players first arrived. They kind of They kind of blew everyone's brains out for a little while. And then I think people calmed down and got the picture properly you know but for a while I was like oh my god uh but it was kind of phantom phantom okay that's it for today uh, thanks for watching bye now